I've checked out a wide range of mechanical keyboards from the high end to the low end, many of which have their gaming tag attached to them. But today we have some boards from an actual gaming company, the Fnatic Streak and Streak Mini mechanical keyboards. First of all, the packaging is fantastic. Great quality box with a slide off lid and great presentation. Inside the box we have the keyboard itself, then in the back we have the cable. For the full size board is non-detachable and for the Streak Mini we get a separate USB-C cable. We then get a sweet little package with some cool Fnatic stickers and a chunky user guide which is filled with a heap of languages because it's only really 6 pages long. And finally we get the wrist rest. Right, so here are the keyboards and as you probably have figured out by now, the Streak is the full size keyboard and the Mini Streak is the 10 keyless or TKL version. And first impressions are that they don't stray too far from what most gaming mechanical keyboards out on the market look like. First of all, I was sent this UK ISO layout, but it will be available in the US ANSI layout, so don't worry about the weird enter key and such. They sport a floating key design so that the key switches aren't covered and the mounting plate is exposed, essentially now being the top plate. The plate is made from aluminium and it does feel fantastic. The anodization is quite nice in this very dark blue colour, however it may be darker on the final version, but the finish is very nice to the touch with a more textured surface making it feel quite chalky and soft, which I enjoy, and in general more premium. It has a quite rounded shape with those corners making it look a bit different to the others, which tend to emphasise sharp angles and lines, but this is rather soft. The enclosure is also very slim and low profile with tapered edges to accentuate that thinness. There's a very slight natural angle of inclination to it, but it's kept nearly flat to maintain that slimness. Around the back, and there's a signature plate which is magnetic, so it's easy to pop off, and it lights up as well. And they have plans to allow people to get custom plates with a gamer tag or whatever text they want, although it is at the back of the keyboard so you'll hardly ever see it, but it is a cool little personalization thing that I welcome, and again, just something different. On the full size streak, we also have a USB pass through, and that's the reason why we have this huge, thick, non removable USB cable. It splits off into two ends, one for the keyboard and the other for the USB port. I never really used it since I have a USB hub, but I guess it may be useful for others. Whether it's worth having this thick annoying cable though, just for that one port, I'm not so sure, but personally I just like it. The bottom is made from plastic and we have some nice solid rubber feet for non-slip and two flip up feet that are also nicely rubber tipped. On the Streak Mini we have a USB-C port which has a channel to make it more secure and the USB-C cable it comes with is great, it comes with a branded strap and a sleek yellow and black design for the end. Both keyboards come with a detachable wrist rest, simply a wrist rest is used to rest your wrists on and elevate them so that the angle is less harsh, but many bundled wrist rests don't even do that which has always been a gripe of mine you'll often see them be just way too short. Fnatic have had a go at having a movable wrist rest, so first you attach this aluminium piece to the bottom of the keyboard, which has some rubber feet on the bottom, and as we can see, it has this ridge design, and in each dip there's some magnets. And these are our three different positions in which we can place the actual wrist rest onto. So we have super close, which is pretty useless in my opinion, like many others, then we have the middle position which is too close for my hands but will suit smaller hands. And then we have the furthest position which I use and this I find to be just a tiny bit short of what I would find perfect but it is still pretty comfortable. I don't have the biggest hands, so naturally for larger hands, I think it's still not far enough, 
And that's unfortunate because they did make the effort to have this whole adjustable wrist rest thing, so I think one more level would have been nice. The actual rest itself is pretty firm but still soft and comfortable. It has a dimpled PU leather surface. I don't really sweat when using the computer so I don't know how well this will hold up, but yeah, it seems pretty well made. The keyboards look pretty good in my opinion. For a keyboard marketed towards gamers, it is on the clean side. It might have been nicer to perhaps make the Fnatic branding a bit stealthier and of course the cheap keycaps are a turn off, but overall it's a decent aesthetic and as always looks are subjective. The two keyboards are very similar on top, just that the streak has a numpad. But the full size board also has a volume wheel, which I know many people do like. On both boards there are 4 extra keys which are not mechanical. First we have the function key lock by itself next to the escape key. Then we have a microphone mute button, but for me this didn't work without the software installed. Then we have the normal mute button. And then we have the competition mode button. By default this disables the windows key, the ability to change the lighting, the ability to record macros and all the secondary functions of the F keys on top. It also changes the lighting to this dim orange colour. However it says that it can be customised in the software, although the software I used was an early access version and I didn't have much control on changing key bindings and such. And I guess the logic behind this is to completely eliminate any distractions and the possibility of accidentally hitting a key or key combination that would disrupt your actions in a game. It's basically a more hardcore version of disabling the Windows key. I've never really gone that hard into gaming, so I can't really decide on whether it's just a gimmick or not, but it's giving you the option which is what counts, and I'm happy to have that. As you would have seen in the software, they do have full RGB backlighting. The lighting can be changed on board via the FN key. The left and right arrow keys control the speed of the effect and patterns. F6 controls the brightness with 5 brightness levels. And F5 allows you to cycle through various effects. We can further customise this in the software which is nicely presented and is easy to use. We can change the colours and also the direction of the effects. In the software we can also customise each key. There are 4 profiles in which we can store our key bindings on, which can be accessed here or via the FN key and F1 to F4. For now I'll just use profile 1, then we can pick a key, I'll pick Q, and it will allow us to pick between the actual Q key or FN plus Q which is the secondary layer. And then we can have macros, remap keys, launch applications or open other things. Most of it is very straightforward as you're just assigning a function to a key, which can be very useful for various work programs, games or just casual use. The macro section requires a bit more involvement. This is where we record our actions in real time. It's actually pretty cool, it shows you each action, the timing and delays. The software and interface overall is very intuitive, easy to use and just clean and simple, although it doesn't have the depth in the lighting customizability that say Corsair has. Looking at the keycaps, and unfortunately these are the cheap ABS plastic caps that are thin at about 1mm and are UV coated with the legends laser etched. These are the most durable as it's susceptible to key shine from finger oils and also fading. Thin keycaps also generally don't help with the key feel. I especially feel this way with Cherry MX Browns and a slim enclosure. If budget mechanical keyboards can offer double shot PBT keycaps, then there's no reason for this not to, because it does bring down the feel and quality of the keyboard. Fortunately, these do have standard keycap sizes, so they're easily replaceable. The key switches I have on these are Cherry MX Brown, but it will also come in blues, reds and silent reds. So these are a light tactile switch, meaning that it has a bump halfway, but no click. I think the MX Browns aren't the best switch to have on a keyboard like this with the thin keycaps and slim enclosure. It feels and sounds quite hollow, and there's no great firmness to the key press, 
and this creates some excess sound. The stabilizers aren't too bad actually, which was nice to see. Usually with retail boards you'll get quite rattly and scratchy stabs, but on my ones, while there is still rattle, it's not as extreme as others. Unfortunately I had trouble opening up the full size keyboard without potentially destroying it, so I was only able to open the Streak Mini by undoing a heap of Phillips head screws and prying it open. There's the normal USB connector that you have to take out, and there's also a ribbon cable for the rear plate lighting, so be careful with that. Here's the plastic bottom shell, and it is quite shallow as you would expect. Instead of having ribbing, they have a heap of plastic protrusions that look like MX stems, and those help support the PCB. The standoffs are just tap plastic, but they are reinforced, and I suspect the full size version will be very similar to this. Here's the rest of it, and we can see how the aluminium plate is the switch mounting plate, and looking at the PCB, it's very clean with perfect solder joints. We have our RGB SMD LEDs which work well. These two other boards are for the smaller membrane keys, and there seems to be two extra LED spots for the spacebar which aren't occupied. The full size version should be the same in this regard. Alright, so we come back to the question, is it a gaming keyboard? Relative to the mechanical keyboard market, I would say, yeah, kind of. But it's difficult to even define gaming. For example, I wouldn't use a full-sized board for gaming since it's so big and takes space away from my mouse. We have the competition mode, which is overkill for me, but it does make sense if you're absolutely serious. We have the adjustable wrist rest to fit different gamers, and it definitely does make playing for hours that bit more comfortable. And we have key customizability and macro capabilities via the easy to use software. One area that I think would further the tag of gaming would be the key switches. There should be the option of at least Cherry MX Speed Silvers if we're getting down to real incremental stuff. The build is decent with the aluminium top plate and the finish on it is beautiful. The keycaps is where the keyboard is let down, making the keyboard feel of lower quality in general, but fortunately it does have a standard layout, so replacing keycaps is easy. Overall, I can see that there has been effort put into this keyboard into making it different. They've thrown in some customizability and innovation, and it does differ from its mainstream competition, and that's what I appreciate.